Welcome back to Delivering More, folks. I have another great Meet the Team to bring to you today. I have with me Holly Kime as of yeah. this past fall. Holly, how are we doing? Oh, doing great. It's been uh, been a minute. Thought mine was going to be a long time ago. Yeah, so this is actually very straight. It's uh, I actually, so I've been uploading the uh, the credits and our podcast on YouTube, and mm-hmm. I just, uh, I had to like backlog all of our Anchor uh, uploads, which is like the mm-hmm. audio podcast that go to like Spotify and Apple Music and everything, and your name is still in the in the video production and podcast production. It's Holly Heard, but oh, I saw goodness. that the other day, and I was like, dang, those were the days. Those were the days. Those were the Back days. Back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, those, those were good times. I was I was back in the OG studio too when uh, when Jim couldn't be there. You were you were our replacement, basically just because you sat right there, more or less, kind of. Yeah, pretty much, and a little bit of a background in it. But uh, I uh, I remember the the OG studio days and the door shutting every time somebody would go to the bathroom <laughs> yeah. or something, or we'd hear the loud beep of somebody coming back. Had to put a sticky note on the door. Hey, don't shut the door. Now we're like, please shut the door. Yeah, yeah. Now we're like, everyone just please be as quiet as humanly possible. Um, We're obviously just here to uh, get to know you a little bit more uh, as far as our driver base, our restaurant base, um, help them get to know you a little bit better, as well as myself. Um, Usually starting out here pretty basic. Um, I believe you're from the area, but where were you born and where did you grow up? Yeah, so um, I am kind of from the area, uh, just a little north of here. I was born and raised in Springfield. Um, not the Dayton one, but just the township nearby. Um, I went to the high school there, um, and then kind of left for a little bit, um, going out to college, but still in the state of Ohio. Um, and then came back, got my degree at Akron and then lived in Arizona for a couple years. And then Springfield is, is, is Fairless out in Springfield? No. So we're up by, um, Ellet, like Ellet. Okay. Akron Ellet. Okay. Okay. I'm familiar with Akron Mm Ellet. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. No worries. And then, uh, first job do you remember what your first job was oh yeah um i worked at arthur's treachers on arlington and waterloo if you know the area it's not the best area um and my parents were really unhappy because i worked nights um and the place got like robbed and broken into all the time is that a grocery store what is no that? so it's fish and chips so it's like long oh, it's like John a restaurant silvers. Okay. yeah it's like long john silvers but little uh under under that it's i tough, guess tough to be on yeah. the watch on so um, and then being in, yeah being in that area uh not the best area to work in especially as like a high school girl like just yeah. because of the people um but that was that was the first job learned a lot there for sure um wouldn't trade it for the world worked with some of the the oddest most unique human beings there too but that was that was the first job for sure and that was like a server waitress or like kitchen nope what, what just were you cashier doing? oh cashier, just cashier. Okay. uh never cooked any food wasn't allowed because of the the like hot oil in my age or something with like workers right type thing um but that was like the first official job um that i had okay and then you went to you said you went to akron did, did we did we work through college or anything yeah. like that yeah, worked through college. Um, did a couple of things here or there. Um, in high school, I did AV tech, and I worked with our um, like local broadcast station, so nice. like that does like nice. football games, plays, stuff like that. Um, and I did a little of that in high school, and like film stuff and edited and like broadcasted it. But then um, while I was in college at Akron, I had the ability to like kind of help them, and I kind of worked there. Um, I did that for a little bit, but I um, started becoming a 911 dispatcher when I was in college was is Akron when you were there was it still 88.1 is that no I didn't work for Akron oh, okay. so I worked for the high school that I went to their oh, broadcast okay, okay, I came okay. in as like an assistant basically just allowing like helping the high school kids do the same thing I did when Got I was in high you. school okay okay all right and then yeah and then so you went to school to be an uh, emergency operator or is that what just the first no. job you had out of so, school so um I actually originally went to school to be a um crime scene like or uh uh, forensics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really wanted to do like an analyst. Yeah. Like basically forensics. <coughs> um, and then I ended up backing out of that, um, because it was too much with my, my, uh, my student athlete type thing. Like it was just too much classwork for me playing sports at the time. So I ended up just going the criminal justice route. And then at Akron, they didn't offer forensics. So I went for just criminal justice and criminology. Um, and I really wanted to find a, a path into that field um, as an entry level job. And one of my professors was like, "You should become a 911 dispatcher. You learn a lot, um, and you'll see it really like hands on, you know, before you get into it and kind of find the avenue that you want to go with." Because I was really undecided. I knew I wanted to go criminal justice, but I didn't know what route. 
Nice. And then, so you started, was your first uh, employment that was in like the Akron area as a dispatcher? Yep. Yeah. So um, like Portage Lakes area, right. um, that's where I, I first started, um, did that part-time, didn't have a full-time job, but I made sure like I was there every single day and um, slowly got an opportunity to also dispatch for a county sheriff's. Okay. Um, and then, so correct me if I'm wrong here, but are we now introducing Mitchell Kime into the picture around this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I met Mitch that summer when I transferred back home and went to Akron. Um, and that was right when he went to um, Croatia, I think, for the last yeah. time. Um, it was the second to last time or the last time that he went for like tournaments and stuff. Perfect. Okay. And then, so obviously, so then you're spending time as emergency dispatcher. What do you like? What year would that be? That would have been 2017, okay, 2018. So, so that's okay. So that's what I was, I was gonna say. It was probably right around the time he. So he probably moved back from Croatia a little bit. Began so he because he started in November 2018. Mm -hmm. with delivered that like two yeah. weeks after I did. We started like hand in hand yeah. together. He was dispatching. You were kind of around for all that then. I mm -hmm. imagine like early. You guys were just early dating stages, things yeah, like that. Do yeah, you remember so... any stories that he was like coming home with in those days? Yeah. So there's like two very, very like prominent like deliver that like <laughs> uh, related stories from when we first got together because that was when we had just gotten our first apartment, um, and he had uh, started with deliver that. And I remember him coming home like the first week, and he's like it's a small band of guys and I'm so excited and in my mind I'm just I'm like all right so you just hanging out with your college buddies <laughs> at this point or like high school friends like you guys just you know partying all day um and it was weird to see him like get excited to like go to work because yeah. the job that he had before it he absolutely hated yeah he was doing like uh like manual labor yeah right? it was like setting up tables and yeah, chairs yeah and yeah stuff. the tents and, and stuff yeah, yeah exactly. and so he absolutely hated it but it was like weird <clears throat> watching him like get up in the morning and like want to go to work like i was just like from day one i was like that's weird because like in my in my shoes i was like yeah i like my job but i i'm not in love right. with it right um but he was absolutely head over heels about it and then i remember the one time it was like when he first started and he woke up late and he was like probably the most distraught most upset that i've ever seen him and like i've watched him cry on my wedding day like but it was like probably one of those like like oh crap moments and he was just frantic he was so he was so scared he was so upset that he like let people down because he woke up late and like everything like that and in my mind i'm like all right i mean i get it. it's a job like you can be upset but like you're taking that to heart and i just remember that story plain as day because we were in the the brand new apartment that we had amazing amazing and then we kind of obviously what we can just transition to you guys your move out to phoenix right mm -hmm. so then when was that 2019 2020 when you guys moved out to phoenix yeah because i think we were only in the apartment like here in the city uh like in ohio i guess for about a year um, and I want to say it was probably 2019, 2020, and we moved out there and I still did dispatching. I worked for like a, um, a university out there. Right. I wanted to go back to school and that's a really good way to get college for free is to work for the university. Um, so I went there and dispatched there, um, and dispatch also for a city out there as well. And Mitch was basically working from home, um, running the dispatch of like the West coast. Yeah. From like my he's like kind of our nighttime guy yeah. at the time. Yeah. 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 Uh, those were, those were I would almost say like tough times on our end. I think it was it was weird to like to have him around, and then he was. You guys were gone for a year and a half, like yeah, two, almost two two years. years yeah. Yeah. yeah, you guys came back in like the wind, like December twenty 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 one. Yeah, I think it was twenty one because I remember when we moved. So when we moved out there, we just drove, and then when we moved home. We drove, and I was like, let's take a different route. And it was right around Thanksgiving time. Um, so I think it was twenty twenty. Or maybe 21. Not yeah, I don't sure. know. I'm trying. I'm trying to yeah. like get my basis of, of how long you guys were out there. COVID happened in 2020, March 2020. It's COVID 19, so it was 20. It was towards the end of 19. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you had 2021. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm sure I could look at like my Snapchat stories or something like that and figure out the day that we I actually think... left. You guys have been back for, I mean, it's going on 2023 now, so my, my timeline's out the door. It's I don't know. two I don't and know. a half years since we've been back. That's what I was going to say. So it, I think it had to have been 20. I think you moved back like end of November, early December 2020. Mm -hmm. that's, what, yeah. that's what we'll call yeah, it. Yeah, we'll just That's what we'll, we'll baseline it. They moved back winter of 2020. You guys are back in the office. 
is that when you began your time with Deliver That? Or, or no. you moved back and still worked at the Merging Dis- Dispatch yeah, and so then came on? We moved back, um, and I knew I still wanted to do dispatching, stuff like that. At that point, I knew that it definitely wasn't going to be a lifelong career for me. It was, um, It's a career that breaks you down as a person. It <laughs> makes you really not want to be around people. Um, and then you hear probably... You're working like weird hours, too, I feel yeah, like, right? Like, um, and that's another thing is it's, it's a lot of... Uh, like low man on the totem pole type of mentality a lot of times where if you're not you know sen- like senior you basically are mandated a lot of times and so I had times where I had to work 24 hour shifts um 18 hour shifts back to back so I would go home and sleep for maybe four or five hours Sheesh. and have to turn around and go back um and so when we moved back I went back to the same agencies that I worked for things like that um and then I didn't start with deliver that until May of 20. 20- 21 21 yeah i think so and that was basically where i hit almost like a a wall or like a breaking point where i was just like all right i can't i can't do this anymore it's just not for me it's not fulfilling me in any capacity um and it was definitely hard it was a hard opportunity to kind of like walk away from because it is a really cool job and i i you know i miss it day to day but it's just not for me as a human um and decided to kind of take a step back and at that time we were hiring here um and it was still one of those weird things that mitch like liked coming to his job (laughs) like it was just like one of those things i'm like i've never met another human that actually enjoys to go to work in the morning um and i was like you know what like i'll do it temporarily and that was like right when i was wanting to like um go to the fire side of things so like i was thinking about going to the fire academy or going to the police academy um really had no idea and i thought it was just going to be like a stepping stone like i was going to be here for like maybe six months and then leave um type of thing um and came in on like the driver relations like recruiting side is basically what is now a csr right and yeah i mean at the time jim that list right there and behind your computer no the literally the paper behind your computer behind your Under, computer yep. there, there you go <laughs> holly kime at the bottom of the list give me a start date Six yeah. three twenty one. So so we're, birthday, we're coming yeah. up on two years. I think mm-hmm. this will release uh, in April, so we'll be a couple months out mm-hmm. from your two year anniversary. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, at the time when you came on, I mean, literally it was you and Britt, right? I think like when you came, it was like it was yeah, a two man, it was a two man operation. I think we maybe two had, woman operation. Yeah, two part timers. I think Colton and uh, B Dub were here at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did like half on our side and then half with this badge type right. of thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we we come a long way now. You guys have really built built that department up, and then obviously, so over the years, well, over the year and a half, I guess now we're going mm-hmm. on year two, since your time with Deliver That has began. What really, ha- like, how has the department like developed and changed since you yeah, began? Uh, a lot. Um, I think a huge, huge difference is like how we used to onboard drivers versus how For we sure. onboard drivers now. It's it's increased tenfold it's like um, lightning speed now, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah it's like the amount of people that we onboard is also tenfold so we kind of had to adapt a lot when it came to that side of things and for me coming in and kind of like where i was i was kind of handling both ends of it um and being able to kind of really hone in on the recruiting side was huge for me because i think we've gotten it to a point where now it's more automated than it was manual at the time like right. we had to do a lot of manual touch points and while we love talking to you know uh, new drivers and doing like welcome calls um, we can't do a thousand of them a month. We don't have the manpower. It's nearly impossible. Um, and it's definitely one of those things that we kind of had to like say goodbye to, like it was a tough decision. So I'd definitely say that's a huge thing is just how we onboard drivers. And then now it's, uh, you know, moving with the technology and stuff that we've had, it's allowed both sides of the business to really adapt and make jobs easier, but then also be able to really hone in on like driver incidents and yeah, things like that. Yeah, you're just focusing on like yeah. some, not necessarily more important, but like yeah things that need addressed more intensive more often. stuff yeah yeah right and then so that's kind of how the department is developed what about your day-to-day like what are you doing daily and when you come into the office yeah so i think it's sh- it, it definitely changed from day one a, a thousand a thousand fold i never in a million years would have thought i was i'd be doing the things that i'm doing right now um for me i would say day-to-day i'm way more in in tune with like the tech side of things now um, yeah, working on that chat bot. Yeah, <laughs> doing the chat bots, the automations um, for not only just recruiting now, but also uh, driver relations and outreach now, because that's something that we've kind of added. And we've kind of added that, I think, over, uh, you know, the the year and a half, year and a half, because 
outside of just onboarding and handling incidents and pay issues, we also want to hear from the drivers. Um, so I think that that was another really big addition to the, the that side of things. But I would definitely say now just I'm way more in tune with like the tech of it and kind of how can we automate things or um, really assist the drivers best and understand kind of like where they're coming from. Amazing. And then, uh, so obviously we kind of mentioned, you know, like when you started, it was literally like you, Brit, a couple of part-timers. Now we got, what, it's you, Brit, Sade, Mignon, Taylor, Sarah. So uh, was that six people? I just named mm-hmm. something along those lines. Yeah. So I mean, we're, we have we're, another one coming. Yeah. Yeah. She'll right. Yeah. Part-time. She's, she's uh, getting onboarded right now during her training over the past two weeks. Um, so, I mean, the departments, it, it's not robust by any means, but, but it's getting built out mm-hmm. compared to what it, usually has been in the past so it's amazing on mine to see something like that what um what do you think is going to be a main focus for your guys department moving forward Ooh, um i definitely think just overall um like connections with drivers and also building like education and like like being way more in tune with how to assist drivers or like what's the main concern you know and how can we address that there's a lot of feedback that we get from drivers um and it's it's a lot at times but it's really honing in on the ones that we know that we can fix like quicker than the other ones right or like what's more of a priority that's a really thing a really big thing for us i think is just mainly knowing like what what's the main issue and like being able to help that so like talking with drivers about like oversaturated markets that was like a huge topic and Mm -hmm. like we never want to do that um and on the recruiting side of things we're like partying because you know we're breaking records but drivers being brought on it's not helping you know the overall cause so being able to kind of realize those types of things and yeah it's a good thing on the you know the surface of it it's not a good thing for the drivers um so i definitely think right now a, a big push of us is just making sure that we're addressing those concerns that deal with more of our side of things so just like getting to the bottom of them i guess yeah it's it's interesting too to actually be in a position where now like those are the things you guys are thinking about right because initially Mm -hmm. it was just it was like you said it was like we need drivers like we need drivers in this market we're opening up Mm -hmm. memphis tennessee we're opening up tuscaloosa alabama we're opening up charleston west virginia we need drivers we need drivers we need drivers and that's like the sing like single mm-hmm. goal I feel like as a department and like now like you said it's like okay now it's like how do we make sure we maintain those drivers and make sure they're having the best time on the platform yeah. as possible yeah absolutely and it's been it's been really interesting to kind of see the uh the change of things and kind of how it goes from you know that we need drivers to okay we don't need any more drivers regardless like we we could bring in some in some areas but on the surface of it, we don't need that many drivers and being able to really hone in has been kind of a, a really cool, but interesting, like take on like growth of where we're at. But then also like from when I first started, it was weird just how we started and how hard we would hammer cities to need people. And now it's like, we can kind of take the gas yeah, off. The now pedal. it's like driver experience is mm-hmm. like what the department's really got, really kind of focused on. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been amazing yeah. to see what you guys have done with the department over the two years since you've been here. So yeah. awesome, awesome job. And uh, we'll close it out here. I got uh, one last little segment. Let me pull up the questions, even though I should have them memorized by now. <laughs> but we're going to close it out here with this or that. Uh, I just need you to pick one or the other. Okay. A little response. It uh, doesn't have to be long or anything, but I'll maybe pry depending on the answer, and, and we'll go from there, okay? All right, cool. All right, starting out, early mornings or late nights? Early mornings, for sure. How early are the mornings? Uh, right now, not as early as I would prefer. I think the winter time just really makes <laughs> yeah. you tired. I'm a, hybr- I'm a hibernator. Um, but I, uh, when the weather's nicer and stuff like that, I tend to get up super early. Um, I was getting up at one point in time, 3.45, um, leaving the house by 4.30 type of thing. And doing what? Uh, I was going to the gym. I was okay. going to the gym in the mornings, um, hitting that and then kind of coming in here. Um, it's weird coming into the office super early and nobody's here, but yeah. I'll tell you what, that's like the best time to get work done. Um, it's like just nobody's in the office. It's dead quiet, that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm a, that's what I, when I was still in dispatch and I had to like open up, I, I loved, I would get in here like six and no one else would come to like seven and yeah. my like, I, I got, I was pure like bliss, pure joy when I could come in here and like keep all the lights off. Yeah. Like it's dark. It's just me and the computer. I'm just like knocking stuff out. That was like those are the serenity. most productive days. Yeah. Like that's that would that would always feel amazing to me. All right. Uh, next up, hot or cold? As like just like temperature outside or like. Well, food, like, however you want to interpret about? it. If you like hot food, cold food, if you like the temperature, hot, cold, however, so however you want to I definitely take it. like 
hot weather, like by far. Um, give me that dry Arizona heat over any other weather. All day. Um, but as a person, I'm, I swear I'm always cold. Like even in Arizona, um, when I first moved out there, it's the middle of May, I think. Um, and it's one of the hottest summers that they had like recorded. And I was outside like in the evening in a hoodie and my sister's like in shorts and a tank top. And she's like, are you crazy? And I'm like, I'm just cold. I'm just cold. I'm cold. And she's like, you're already acting like an Arizona person. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, uh, next up, my phone keeps blanking out. Oh, this is good. This is always a good one. I think I, I know your answer to this based on being at your guys place a couple weeks ago, but dogs or cats it's not even a discussion it's dogs by far um i had cats growing i had a cat growing up and it was the meanest thing ever and i'll never have a cat again oh it was yeah, that's so what, mean. that's what lissa was saying lissa was saying they're so temperamental and yep. like just yeah and we had one that was like uh they that breed is like known to not like kids and be super oh, territorial man. the thing would attack me as a kid and I, I i just remember being like all right i never want a cat in my life yeah yeah i'm, I'm not i'm not on the cat life either yeah. um moving right along books or movies books by far I, can, I don't i can't sit and watch a movie now day to day i just can't i don't watch them what uh what would you say do you have a favorite book of all time oh, by far can't hurt me by david goggins that okay. book i will definitely say that book has changed my life and i will recommend it to anybody it 10 out of 10 i'll read it and i catch myself randomly finding like uh snippets of it or just like going back and rereading it all yeah. the time the, the Kine family is a, is a Goggins family. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You guys are all about Goggins. Yep. Cool. All right. And uh, last one, we'll, we'll close it out here. Staying in or going out to eat? So, oh, going out to eat. I thought you were just like homebody. Or oh, well, yeah. I mean, I'm a homebody. Definitely a homebody. Yeah. Um, but I would I would definitely like to say I'm way more of like going out to eat because I like to try different cuisines mm -hmm. and i know that if i tried to cook them it's not always going to taste the same so i would much rather have it from like you know like from the horse's mouth type of situation like if i want to like try uh a certain type of dish i'm going to go to the place that like specializes in okay it. what uh what would you say your favorite type of cuisine is i would say asian cuisine asian cuisine yeah. what uh do you got a favorite place around here there, well, there. So there is a place that's up in like Portage Lakes, and it's more Vietnamese. Um, and they have pho. It's like this, yeah. the the large thing of soup. And I could sit down and eat the entire thing. Like I, full shame in it, or like no shame in it, I guess. Um, I will eat that like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, that's that's probably a great winter dish too. Oh Keep yeah. it nice and warm. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, that is uh, that's Holly Kime, folks. We appreciate our time with us today. Thank you so much for letting us get to know you a little bit better. And uh, I'm sure the drivers will, will speak with you on the phones. We'll, yep. we'll see you later, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. You're welcome.